ladies and gentlemen now with today's global update we finally got the fully revamped version of fort solgris and this is a massive game changer for farming gold so previously you would farm the most difficult red book stage on auto and just leave it mainly for half stamina weekends but now the gold dungeon instead of being based on keys is actually based on stamina and the rewards for gold are significantly increased you got a chance for you are chest per opponent and also a heavily increased drop prey on SSR as well and again you've got infinite farming potential now unless you are a um a massive blubbery well and you have like 3,000 stamina potions you probably only want to do this on half stamina weekends because again every single run at the top level is 48 stamina so unless you have like thousands and thousands of potions they're going to burn through so incredibly quickly outside of half stamina but if you are free to play if you are a casual player then you do want to save and allocate about 75% of your stamina potions for half stamina gold farming because the drop rates and the amount of gold you can get is absolutely insane it works out if you can get a um a uh, half efficient team running uh, over a hundred million gold every 24 hours during half stamina and again it's still the same result outside of that but it's so expensive outside of that that you don't really want to go for it unless you're a massive blubbery well so yeah even at 24 stamina during half stamina it's still going to burn through your potions like crazy uh, so today I'm going to show you what I believe to be the best setup I know not everybody's going to have access to Shin and Lost Vein so I'm going to go through quite a few different setups today as well just to show you what's potentially available uh, but this team appears to be the quickest and most consistent at least in my experience but again there's a lot of stuff available ideally on this stage you want a three turn KO in order to make it go as fast as possible however uh, four turn KO is also fine as well that's a very very quick speed for this stage but three turn KO is the absolute minimum so you start off your three nights to um uh, cleave down and deal with here and then after that there's going to be one more knight that drops down if you kill at least one of them this turn as well it just guarantees that that knight does drop down so not all of them need to die first turn here uh, just at least one of them ideally but Shin hits like a truck man he is so incredibly good for auto farming but I also understand that again so many global players do not have access to Shin because he's been a very uh, OC limited character for the most part on global Again, he's so incredibly good just because, like, most of the time, second turn, he's going to upgrade everything in hand, which means that um, uh, you're going into the final wave with, like, uh, a couple of gold cards at least. So here we've actually got Lost Fane's ult because we've got a clutch upgrade there. So yeah, this is just like crazy, crazy Shin RNG for the most part. But also, even the Hauser Gold card would probably one-shot the entire wave there as well. Uh, and I've got UR gear on Lost Vein, Hauser, and Shin. But on the Japanese version, I don't use UR gear on Hauser. I just use the uh, the set on Blue Demon Meliodas. So yeah, this team's really, really good for probably like the quickest and most consistent... Um, uh, three turn KO overall uh, so we'll just go for uh, like another run through just so you can see slightly different RNG because again that was super super lucky in terms of what we got there but again we are going to be covering a few different setups as well uh, but basically cleave characters is what you need and Lost Vein, Sariel, Hauser uh, even like Demon Hendrickson some people use Demon Hendrickson on JP I tested out Demon Hendrickson I found him a little bit slow personally <laughs> but I know some people use the combo of like Shin and Demon Hendrickson uh, to ignite more damage off Shin uh, in case you don't get additional Shin debuffs there. Uh, but here we didn't draw another Shin uh, debuff card. So unfortunately, we don't get the upgrade on everybody here. So this is, um, I would say, more on the unfortunate side of RNG. Might still have enough damage if the AI plays smartly here. Um, yeah, actually it might be enough. Because that's going to upgrade uh, Shin and House's card here. <laughs> so yeah, I think this should be good here, man. But there we go. Shin, again, is just an absolute beast. We've got the silver on House. Oh, doesn't quite finish, man. If only you'd used that, like, gold pierce card, though. Would have got it down there. But as you can see, like, most of the time with this team, you are going to get a three-turn KO. But if you are a little bit unfortunate, again, sometimes it might be a four-turn KO. Um, but, you know, that isn't always the, the worst thing when, like, it's burning through your stamina like crazy. Now, now to move on to our second sub with a character I think a lot more of you have than Shin, which is Green Halloween Gotha. Uh, 
there. So for this one, Lost Vane is actually in the middle. I found left hand side very often he would fail kind of the three turn KO, but this one is a lot more unreliable in comparison to the, uh, the what is it, the first team for three turn KO. Again, most of the time this one is going to get the four turn KO and fall like a little bit short in the final phase, but first turn you're always going to, um, uh, what does it kill at least one of them uh, allow the second one to drop down um but yeah this should be interesting i think he goes go the pumpkin bombs here and then um yeah how's a cleave lost thing cleave because of the lucky merger And then next turn, it's going to be like Lost Vein single target. Actually, might be another Gotha Pumpkin Bombs if he does draw that. Okay, so it's probably going to be Lost Vein single target. Oh no, both the Hauser cards. Okay, everything to merge into the rank up there. This is actually really good RNG because it now gives us Hauser's ult in the final phase. So I think Gotha's going to upgrade Hauser ult and then Lost Vein cleave. So yeah, I think this is three turn KO here. This one was a, a little bit lucky in all fairness, man. Again, with this one, sometimes it might be a four turn KO depending on RNG and exactly what you get. Oh, he's going for a Ghost of Pumpkin Bombs to finish here. So it might actually not be a kill here. Uh, actually, no, just just about, just about. If we didn't have UR gear on Hauser though, I think it would have fallen a, um, a little bit short there overall. But again, if you don't have Shin, that's kind of a really good alternative team you can use for Halloween Gotha. But I also do understand that not everybody has Halloween Gotha. Now, to change up the team a little bit, you can run Sariel in the place of Green Gotha or Shin. Alternately as well, in the place of Lost Vein Meliodas on the previous teams, uh, you can run Sariel as a substitute as well, because I know some of you may be thinking I don't have Lost Vein Meliodas. Um, uh, but Sariel's really, really good. Pretty much fills exactly the same role in terms of auto farming that Lost Vein does. And also on the sub, as an alternate to Death Pierce, you can run the red SR version of Jericho. Because again, with these teams, mainly is your red units dealing the damage. And that additional attack related stats bonus to Pierce as well uh, does some nice work on Hauser. But Hauser's really, really good for farming this dungeon, at least in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's begin and see how this one does. I think this should be a pretty consistent four turn KO team uh, but if you are really lucky you might be able to get the um, uh, the three turn KO as well but again you don't have like the upgrades from Shin and also you don't have the damage bonus from Green Gotha's passive um, and you do have like two more single target cards so you are a little bit at the mercy of RNG but we've put Sariel and Lost Vein uh, to the right hand side here so that hopefully when it comes to kind of the final wave all of those single target cards are used up and you're going to have like a triple cleave draw so it should allow you to one shot the um uh, the final wave and this is really really good uh, hopefully goes to the single target doesn't man oh that's really really annoying Okay, yeah, just used up all the best cleave cards there, and Sariel's got ult, so I don't think he's going to use that in the right place as well. He ideally wants to use it on Dreyfus here, uh, but yeah, we'll see We'll see what happens with this one, man. I'm not overly hopeful that it's going to be a three-turn KO. <laughs> oh, actually, it could be. It could be. Like, a Lost Vein cleave, the Sariel cleave, they're quite strong uh, cards to throw out. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit short, I think, here. And again, especially with um, lower gear levels out there, this is a bit more of a, uh, a four-turn KO than a reliable three-turn for the most part. But it's still a team. Again, works very efficiently, works very, very well, very close to a three-turn KO. And some of the time, again, with the right RNG, and depending on like what the AI draws and merges, um, it could be a three-turn KO, so it's going to net you a little bit of speed in uh, certain areas. Uh, but anyway, let's mix up the team and go for something a little bit different. Now, just to go for like the most free-to-play accessible team I can think of here. So you got Red Coin Shop Gotha, uh, Hauser, Demon Hendrickson. Everybody got a free copy like, uh, what is it, a couple of weeks back and also Death Pierce as well. Again, this is uh, not going to be the most optimal team. You can also run Hendrickson with like Green Halloween Gotha and Green Shin, and that's a pretty good... Uh, what is it four turn team sometimes three turn as well if you do get some really good RNG on that one um, But yeah, we'll try this one out see how it works again. It's a bit more of a budget um, a Hybrid of uh, the two really popular farming teams here But let's see how it does work out on auto So I think uh, actually what, what's the AI gonna go for so he's got go go the merger I think go through attack disable here and then both the Hauser cards so yeah, only using one debuff at the start of every single turn. Unless it's um, upgraded, I think. 
Right, hopefully this is enough to get this knight down here. Yeah, it should be, man. Okay, that's really good news. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay, he's going to die at the start of the next turn as well. So, again, it, it like, prolongs it a little bit. But it's it's kind of better than, like, taking another full turn. So that's why Hendrickson, like, isn't too bad for auto farming. He's kind of like a, you know, three and a, three and a half turn, four and a half turn kind of guy. <laughs> but he's still, like, a pretty fast character for this, despite uh, disadvantage as well. Because, again, I don't think this is going to actually kill on this. But I think all of the debuffs are going to tick and probably kill after. And worst case scenario, it's just like one house a card to finish it off so yeah if you're like super budget and you don't have like sariel lost fame built out again this combo could work like really really nicely for you as well i just wanted to try and go through like multiple different options because i know there are going to be so many different players watching this video with so many different rosters uh but yeah hopefully you did enjoy today's breakdown on how to uh farm gold in fort solgress and also just to show you the spreadsheet as well that i made on the japanese version so these are some of the calculations that i've done from the japanese version and again everything is exactly the same during a half stamina weekend so in 11 hours i actually managed to farm almost 50 million gold so this was the amount of chests i got so i got 50 of the ur ones uh 580 ssr uh, and also 941 of the sr and again those really really do add up especially when they're in like stacks of hundreds there uh but also one of the big factors uh with gold chest in comparison to um uh, selling books as well is as long as you've done i believe it's chapter nine or before that you summon veronica into the tavern and feed her the right meal you get the 20 percent boost to gold so this is like so so much on top of like a massive stack of gold but you've also got the base gold as well so yeah my 11 hours result was about uh 49 million again almost 50 million there so the gold per hour during a half stamina weekend uh i think as well when i did this I had a slightly more um, uh, inefficient team than my top one now. It was about 4.5 million gold per hour. So over a 24-hour period, it was just over 108 million gold there. And again, I do think about 125, 130 is probably the upper limit to farming. Uh, but again, there's a lot of like RNG when it comes to like card draw and the chest that you get as well. So there can be some variance in these results. Uh, but just to give you, you know, a bit of an insight into gold farming now on Global, and hopefully you've got an idea of what teams are working well, uh, how much gold you can get, and why you need to be very prepared to auto farm. Literally, like the minute the half stamina event does come around, uh, not this upcoming weekend, but the weekend end after uh so yeah ladies and gentlemen hopefully you did enjoy today's video and breakdown if you did please do smash that like button that'd be greatly appreciate it aside from that thank you all very much for watching take care and i hope you have an absolutely fantastic day